Okay, this video is, does modernism cause dietary stupidity with the focus on India? Just because I, I, was, I saw a Facebook post, this real smart guy, I'm, I'm in some Facebook groups about nutrition, and this real smart guy, I don't know if he wants me to say his name, so I won't say his name, but he had posted about this exact situation here, that the richer the state of India, the more <laughs> diabetes they had. So you can look at this color-coded map. So the red is the worst. You know, over 10% of the persons have diabetes, and these are the wealthier areas. Uh, so it's kind of funny. That usually means that the poor, more rural persons are eating their old-fashioned, primarily plant-based diets. And the thing about this pattern is it's the same everywhere in the world. If you look at Hawaii, I mean, if you look at the old Japan, as they would start moving to Hawaii, they'd get fatter and sicker, and then to continental USA, like California, fatter and sicker, because they're eating more meat and oils. Okay, and it happens with every other population, the same thing. As they progress towards the so-called modern diet, standard American diet, they eat more meat, they eat more oils, they get fatter and sicker. And, you know, it's always the same pattern. You look at McDougal when he was out in Hawaii, and he said he worked in the city with the educated, so-called elite, you know, lawyers, doctors, and all these other professionals, and they're all fat and sick. And then he's working with the sugarcane workers, manual laborers. They would retire at 65, go to the Philippines, get a new bride over there, raise a whole family, die in their late 80s. Whereas, you know, the city folks are all fat and impotent. So anyways, um, this is the characteristic pattern. This is the color-coded map of India. Uh, Japan, too. They had a lot more dementia when they started eating all the meat and the oils. That's the research of Dr. Yamashima. I'm going to show some of that. So these are some of the... Uh, illustrations from these articles about what's happening in India. So basically, there's two major patterns of atherosclerosis. The typical Western pattern is a lot of high-fat diets with atherosclerosis in the carotid artery at the bifurcation, internal carotid artery going up to the brain, coronary arteries, lots of bifurcations in the coronaries. Um, the Asian pattern of atherosclerosis, referring especially to the Japanese, was lots of hypertension because they eat tons of sodium and they smoke lots of cigarettes. And the hypertension would especially cause intracranial atherosclerosis. So they had a lot of strokes. It also increases diabetes risk. So here's pretty much how it summarizes out. And what you can see here is you eat the American diet with lots of fat, especially saturated fat, you're screwed. You end up plugging up all your arteries, a lot of myocardial infarction, most common cause of death. The men are just routinely impotent. Over 50% of men are impotent by 50 years of age. Okay, the low-fat vegans don't have a problem with that. Okay, they also got lots of cancer. Meat's the number one carcinogen. East Asia, where they eat a lot of rice, but they also smoked a lot of cigarettes, had a lot of sodium. Um, they would get, you know, intracranial atherosclerosis and a lot of strokes, but they were protected because their diet was low in fat, and they also had a lot of fruits and vegetables to gain antioxidants, so they didn't get much uh, diabetes. Um, South, Asian, South Asia, which were like India in particular, they actually are much less healthy than one would expect. You know, you look at them, they're skinny, and they seem very healthy quite often. And they'll tell you they're vegetarian, but they're usually like uh, lacto-vegetarian, you know, uh, from the milk in particular, you know, the ghee, butter, and whatnot. But the big thing that I think gets them in trouble is they eat a lot of fried food. Um, and um, Dr. Yamashima's work, you know, he's a Japanese neuroscientist who's trying to figure out why so many Japanese are becoming demented now. I'm going to go through that literature here in a moment. I think the same thing's happening to the population in India. And they also... It also causes diabetes, the same thing that's destroying neurons in the brain. And so look at this here. When you eat the low-fat, low-sodium vegan diet, it's low in sat fat. You should have, and I also, by this, I mean no oil, zero oil, um, not one drop. Low in sodium. They don't smoke. Uh, you eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. You don't get diabetes, type 2. You don't get it. You don't even get type 1 if you start that way since, you know, birth. Um, hypertension. You don't get it. Am I? You don't get it. I mean, what more do you want? That's as good as it gets. That's as good as anything gets in this world, okay? Okay, so what's the problem with eating all these oils, these omega-6 fats, PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids? They got more than one double bond, which predisposes them to something called lipid peroxidation. So peroxidize, peroxidize when you got two oxygens in a row. This electron is not tightly held here with this hydrogen because the two double bonds are pulling on it. And as they pull on it, It'll get plucked off the hydrogen. You'll have a free electron with an unpaired outer orbital, and then two oxygens will bind. And this will then undergo a cascade of chain reactions. 
damaging plasma membranes, causing all kinds of problems. It's called lipid peroxidation, and it can cause all kinds of chain reactions to destroy membranes. One of the byproducts of um, lipid peroxidation is formation of this thing called HNE, hydroxy non-enol. Okay, so just looking at this name, hydroxy, because there's a hydroxyl group. It's 4-hydroxy because it's on carbon number 4. Non, N-O-N, that means 9. There's 9 carbons, so it's a C9. Um, ene is for the double bond right here, so hydroxy non and all. And then al means aldehyde, it's an aldehyde. So you don't need to know all the chemical details, but just know HNE is an indicator of lipid peroxidation, and it's a very toxic molecule that it's like bouncing a Super Bowl around inside of a porcelain glassware shop, okay? It breaks everything. The older people get, if they eat a westernized diet, the more and more H&E uh, they have accumulating in their blood. H&E is toxic to mitochondria. It damages ATP synthase. So you need to make energy. I mean, the, the whole life in a cell depends on making ATP energy. Here's an article if you're curious about the references for this one. Okay, and then this now relates to the work of Yamashima. What he showed was happening is, first of all, let's talk about normal uh, cell function. And we're in particular talking about a neuron in the brain here because it also causes brain damage. Um, the HSP is for heat shock protein. Heat shock protein has two really important jobs in a neuron. Proteins eventually become gradually dysfunctional as they get glycated and have other problems. And once they're dysfunctional, the heat shock protein, it functions like a chaperone to take these uh, proteins. I have them drawn in black. They look like little sperm. It drags them back to the lysosome. Lysosome is a recycling center inside a cell. The heat shock membrane, uh, I'm sorry, the HSP heat shock proteins, they also bind to the lysosome membrane and they stabilize it. They keep it intact. Well, anyways, when you got hydroxy nonanol, it will bind to the heat shock proteins, the HSPs. And when it does, it distorts their shape and it causes the activation of what's called the calpane protease. It's a great name for it. It's calcium activated, that's the cal, and it's also pain in the sense it causes pain, which is very destructive. And anyways, once it binds to the HSPs, like the green circle here, it will cleave them in half and destroy their function, so they no longer can do this job. So now the cell will accumulate dysfunctional pro, uh, proteins, the lysosome can't be stabilized, it starts to leak its you know, toxic caustic enzymes into the cell and damage the cell, the cell dies. Okay, so basically, it's damaging neurons in your brain, your hippocampal memory center. It makes you stupid, okay? It's bad. You don't want that. Here's just a picture from some of the Yamashima papers. Here's his name, Tetsumori Yamashima. And here it is causing damage to the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is important for multiple reasons. It's where our hormones are regulated. It also includes the arcuate nucleus, which is considered the hunger center, if you will, of the human body. And when that becomes progressively damaged, a person has, uh, can develop less ability to regulate their hunger and predispose them to obesity. Plus, if your hormonal system's out of whack, uh, you're predisposed to a whole bunch of other problems too. Here's another uh, illustration from the Yamashima papers. This one's about hippocampal uh, neuronal death due to uh, excessive hydroxynonanol, HNE. So here's shown a normal neuron. You can see relatively uh, distinct lines around the, the cell the nucleus of the cell, and in comparison, here's destroyed dead neurons due to this toxicity from lipid peroxidation and hydroxy non and all. The other thing is, you know, in Western societies, the men are iron overloaded after 20. Once puberty's over, they're not growing anymore, and the women tend to become iron overloaded after pu after uh, once they become postmenopausal. So the reason that's relevant is they start developing free iron, and then the free iron uh, is toxic because it can undergo ferrous redox cycling, which means to cycle back and forth between Fe2+, plus, Fe3+, plus, and in the interim, giving electrons to something called the Fenton reaction. You can remember Fenton reaction, Fe, and Fe for ferrous for iron, Fe for Fenton reaction, which means that the electron from the iron ferrous redox cycling uh, causes the formation of hydroxyl radicals. It's a very aggressive, powerful radical, damages DNA, damages... Uh, plasma membranes, and it synergistically, this free iron will work with lipid peroxidation to kill cells. That's a type of cell death called ferroptosis. Uh, one big marker of uh, excessive oxidative stress, you'll get accumulation of hydroxy non and all, especially oxidative stress in the lipids like plasma membranes. 
Um, there's other markers for other contexts. You know, we're not going to go into all that today, but this ferrous redox cycling of extra iron, it's real toxic. You know, the, it's like a, this painting, the burning city. Uh, Ed Weinberg has a great metaphor. He says, iron's like a fire. It's good to have where you need it, you know, in the fireplace and the stove, but you don't want it anywhere else because it damages things. That painting there is called the burning city. Okay, so what causes oxidative stress? When you have a, an imbalance, when you've got more things causing oxidation, less things that are antioxidants. So excessive iron, excessive copper, excessive omega-6 fats, anything that causes hypoxia will also make it worse. Leaky gut will also lead to it. Um, so here's the point I wanted to make. Most people are iron overloaded and they're simultaneously eating too much of these omega-6 fat oils. And they generate this ferroptosis where when you have high f amounts of free iron and high amounts of omega-6 fats, they work together to synergistically cause more cell death, okay? So you're just destroying cells. And you destroy the cells in your pancreas, your beta cells, you can't make adequate amounts of insulin, you become type 2 diabetic. You destroy them in the brain, you progressively become stupid. So basically, here's how you win the game. So if you want to win the game, this is what you do. You, you go down this path and you have to all avoid toxins as well. So anyways, that's why I think uh, India has such a high amount of diabetes because they're destroying their pancreas from lipid peroxidation related to excess intake of omega-6. That's the best conclusion I could come to from studying the subject. You know, there's other things, of course, that contribute to it. If you're eating meat, the saturated fat causes insulin resistance. Excessive amounts of dietary sodium contribute to it because you, you want high potassium relative to sodium, like 10 to 1, but instead uh, people are often getting the opposite ratio when they eat westernized-type diets.